All right, so I do recommend you look at Social Media Examiner uh, at some point. It's very useful. I've got another website that we'll look at briefly, then we'll get hands-on. Uh, let me preview what this will be, and then I'll give you the link to it in just a moment. This is the How to Create a Sensible Social Media Strategy for Your Business. So there's a little, there's a little article here about a variety of sort of like to-do list items. I'll give you the exact link to this in just a moment. But the idea here, I really like this, um, this blog post, this article, because before we really want to get into any of these networks, we sort of need to have step zero. Why are we using the networks? We can talk about the how all three months long. We'll also need to cover the why, but the why of of using the networks is going to rely a little bit more on you. What kind of business do you have and such? So before I preview the article, let me write down a few things here. The big question. Why am I using Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or Instagram? or any of the other dozens of networks that are out there. Why am I using any of them? That's the big one that needs to be answered first. Answering this one first is often very important and often difficult. If you just try to get online because you constantly hear people uh, oh, you're not on Facebook? What's your Facebook? Uh, you're, you, what's your Instagram? You're not on Instagram? Well, just answering the question that way about, okay, I guess I'll get on Instagram. Everyone wants, wants me on Instagram. Well, that's not enough of an answer to get on any of these networks. The why of why you get on the networks is a little bit more involved of answering, which we will cover as the course goes on, but it's still going to depend on your particular needs. The answer depends on the needs of your business. The why of getting on one network versus another is going to depend on your needs. I need to reach a young audience. I need to reach a, a techie audience. I need to reach a female-friendly audience. I need to reach whatever. I need to reach XYZ. Therefore, I'm going to uh, attempt to go into the networks or the directions of where those clients are. And again, I'm using the terms client, product, brand, but all of this applies to anything that you're trying to do online. I'm a painter. I want to show off my paintings. Well, I should go off to some social networks that really focus on visuals and art. Maybe Snapchat, Instagram, Pinterest. Well, I, I have um, a daycare business that I'm trying to reach young parents. Uh, okay, maybe I'll go over to Facebook or Twitter if, if I think that's the right place. So the why of using any of these networks is one of the first questions to answer. And this um, article that I'm about to show you helps you with that. So it's a good idea to have a marketing strategy or editorial calendar set up first. before using the networks. I uh, teach, um, in addition to these marketing and social media classes for this college, I also teach programming classes. We program apps and such. Now, if you've never programmed an app, do you think it's a good idea to jump right into the software and start coding the app without any plan? Probably not. Your code will be broken, or your app won't do what you think. So at the very least, in designing an app, you want to plan it a little bit. You want to sketch out what the screens will be like. You want to figure out this will connect to this, and I need a feature to be able to scan a barcode. So before writing the code to scan the barcode, before writing the code to connect to GPS, I have to have the idea this app will do these things eventually. Social media is not as technically difficult as programming, but it, it could still be difficult to do. Uh, if you don't have a plan. If I just say, well, I'm going to get on Twitter because everyone says I should be on Twitter, but I don't even know how to use Twitter and I've barely touched it a few times, 
uh, you're not going to succeed. You don't know how to use the platform, number one, but you don't know how to use the platform successfully. And we will be covering the how to use it successfully, of course, but I, I can't quite cover the every aspect of every network for every single use case scenario. The good news is that most networks operate like every other network. Once you learn how Facebook works, it will be very similar in how to use it in Twitter. Once, if you learn how to use Twitter, it's very similar in LinkedIn. Yes, there are specific demographics. Yes, the interface is different. Yes, maybe you can put 10 pictures instead of one, but the concepts are going to be very similar uh, of, how to, of how they get used. Once you master the basic operations or actions in one network, they will translate to another. So for example, some of the basic actions on all networks. Posting, sometimes called sharing or uploading. I'm going to post a picture on Twitter, which they would call it a tweet. I'm going to tweet a picture. I'm going to post a picture on Facebook. I'm going to share a picture on Facebook. I'm going to upload a picture on Pinterest. They call it pinning it. I'm going to pin a picture on Pinterest. They might have their own terminology, but they're all the same thing. Posting a picture, sound, link, etc. Um, when someone enjoys your content on Facebook, for example, how do they show that? How do they show that they've enjoyed your content? Or how do you show you enjoy someone else's picture on Facebook? It's a like. So like, thumbs up, smiley, uh, plus one, whatever the network calls it, hearts. whatever the network calls it, some sort of way that the content is liked on a basic level. Uh, if you were on Twitter and you really liked someone's tweet, you might want to pass it along. Does anyone know what the term is for passing someone's tweet along, like forwarding someone's tweet? A retweet. A retweet. Yes, so that would be um, reposting which would be retweet, uh, you could call it a uh, reshare, uh, you know, you could call it, it's a forward, you forwarded it, passed it along, reposting. It got uh, sent off to, to someone else. You can do that on all the networks, basically. If you enjoyed something on YouTube, you saw a great YouTube video, you have the ability to like it. That's a thumbs up on uh, YouTube. You also have a, the ability to say your opinion about the video. What is that? Commenting. You can often comment or reply to content on the network. And lastly, another common action for all of these networks. Let's say people see your photos, they really like your photos, they want to keep up to date with you, they want to see all of the photos you will be posting in the future. What will they be doing? Following or subscribing, exactly. So following or subscribing or whatever the name is on all the other networks. Subscribing, that's the main names there. So they might have different names, but they're all the same sort of action. I'm going to post something on Twitter or Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram or etc. I'm going to like or thumbs up or smiley or heart or whatever your, your photo. I'm going to repost it, reshare it, retweet it, forward it, whatever it's called. I'm going to comment, reply to it, join in on the conversation. And ultimately, I'm going to follow or subscribe to your account. All of these that I've said very generically apply to all the networks. So what I've said up here, the good news is that most networks operate very similar to each other. So 
we're going to be covering a variety of networks, one network per day. That means we're not going to become a pro in every network. We're going to get a taste of all the networks. We're going to have like a tasting tour of all of the networks. And the point of that is, maybe you thought, well, I just need to get into Twitter. That's the big one. Or maybe I need to get into Facebook. That's the only one that matters. Maybe you might not know. Maybe your audience is on Instagram and you never thought about it. Maybe your audience is on Snapchat. Maybe you like to use Twitter and you never thought about it. Maybe you are very fond of creating YouTube videos and you never thought of it. So I'm going to cover all of those networks as much as we can on each network per day. Whatever we don't cover, if we run out of time on Facebook, well, again, all of these concepts are going to repeat themselves over and over on all of the networks with some nuance. This article here, here are a few steps you can take to focus your energy. Define your target audience, start blogging. Let me give you the link before I go further because there's a lot of great stuff in this article. If you, if you um, go back to the network folder, let me remind you where the network folder is. I've just added something new there. If you go to the desktop of your computer, double click computer at the top left, and then double click in the network location section, double click classroom data drive Z. This is the network folder, double click that. And then you will find our class among the other classes, Campus Social One. Double click Campus Social One. And then you can copy this file I just added, Social Media Strategy for Business. You can copy that to your desktop or your flash drive. And inside of that, it's got the link where you can go see the article I'm about to show you. So this article here, uh, it's a pretty quick read. It says it's two minutes. It comes from HubSpot.com. This is another great website that I like about keeping up to date with uh, social media and all of that. And we're not going to read it word for word, but you can check it out on your own. Uh, OK, well. Just like in the real world, a company is going to try to reach the right audience. You need to reach the right audience, who your audience is. So you need to say, these are the people I'm going to try to focus my efforts to. This talks here about question. I'm sorry, the file won't open. It's a text file. It's a text file, and then inside of it has a link. So copy that link into your okay. web, web browser. So blogging. Here's one other strategy that helps you in social media. Create educational content. Question? Question here? Sorry, I'm just so used to a Mac and I'm just not getting it. Now uh, you can help each other, but please uh, remember we're in a classroom and not to distract each other, please. So um, creating educational content. Uh, creating articles or content with checklists or videos or infographics. Focus on uh, a few networks. Adjust your tactics and such. So the, the article, I really like it because it kind of breaks things down into good chunks of information. And then it's got a really great checklist at the end. Uh, this is printable, I believe. And you can fill stuff like this out. Uh, okay, like demographics, fine. But if you jump over here, for example, here's some great advice like on Facebook. Um, add a post to your company page X times a day. You might decide, okay, uh, three times a day, one time a day, I'm going to do a goal of using Facebook. Then you can check it off as you do it. Uh, add your events to Facebook company page. Okay, I'm going to do events. Ask people to like. Oh, I've never done that. I haven't asked friends and family to do that, so I can do it and check it off. If you're going to use Twitter, same sort of thing here. It sort of uh, gives you a sort of a template to get started off with actions that you can do on the networks. Follow X new people. Part of the strategy of getting more followers on any of these networks is that you also are active. You can't expect people to 
know that you exist and then follow you. You have to let them know I exist and then they'll follow you. And we'll get into the nuances of how to do these things, of course. But I wanted to present this link to you because I, I really recommend you, you, you check it out and use it as a good uh, checklist and guide for what you're trying to do in social media. Okay, so first network we'll use Twitter tasks. <coughs> Set up an account if you don't have one. Complete the bio info. Create one to three pieces of content. Dot 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 get followers on Twitter and all of the networks it's important to get followers followers are your captive audience followers are those that are going to pay attention to you so it's like I have a TV channel I want viewers I want people to come to my TV channel uh, just, uh, Jim. Yes. channel and I want viewers I want people to tune in every week to the channel I have a Twitter account I want people to tune into my Twitter I, I have a YouTube I have a Facebook I want people to tune in I want followers I think a lot of the times people focus on the end result too quickly and they don't do these other steps they don't have the account set up properly they don't have actual content before starting to get followers so we'll, we'll cover these in a moment tips to get followers we have some steps that we need to do before trying to get followers. So how many of you currently have a Twitter account? Okay, good. So we can use your Twitter account that exists. If you don't have a Twitter account, uh, you can take a moment. I'll show you how in a moment. You can either create an account or just follow along at the moment. Um, Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts are all free and perhaps for the purposes of the class you can create one make it up completely and then when the class is over just delete it um, that is possible so for the first task here let's go to twitter.com if you don't want to do this in a public classroom that's fine you don't have to log in you don't have to set it up you don't have to do any of that you can just follow along take notes and do it at your own computer um, remember, I'm recording this. If you'd like to replay it at your, at your leisure, you need to send me the email and you can watch the video at your own pace. But at this point, either log in with your existing account or go through the steps of sign up. Uh, I'm not going to go through a step by step to sign up, but if you're having trouble, you can check with me. Question? Is it important to keep a different Facebook, Twitter, whatever, business account personal as opposed to business? The short answer, I think, would be yes. Let me answer it a little longer. Uh, should you have a separate, se separate, separate? I don't have spell check on this. Separate um, personal and business account. Uh, yes, because one account ha usually has more features than the other. On my business Facebook, I have the ability to do ads or check deep statistics and such, and I don't have that on personal because Facebook doesn't believe a person needs those tools. So I would separate those things. Now people sometimes say, well, uh, I, I'm, I'm a lawyer and my name is my business and, and that's me. Do I separate that? That's a little bit more difficult to answer depending on what the person is trying to do, but most likely you're still going to separate your lawyer side versus your personal side. 
So usually, yes, you want to keep these separate unless they are very tight together business purpose-wise. So um, I'm going to log in. Okay, so when you get into the account, um, on uh, Twitter, what I'm saying here in the notes, ultimately you're trying to get followers because this is your captive audience. It's as if in the real world, I put a billboard on Main Street so all of the traffic that passes Main Street can see it. But I need more people to see my billboard, so I'll also put it on Second Avenue. <clears throat> and I'll also put it on Broadway. I'll put the billboard in more places to reach more of an audience. In social media, it's the followers. The more followers that I have, the more impressions that I have, the more conversions that I have. Because oftentimes only 1% of your followers are your true followers. I have 100 followers. What's 1% 1 of 100? 1. That means I've got 100 followers. Am I going to make 100 sales? No, it's going to be more toward that 1%. I have 100 followers. I'm going to make one sale. That's, that sounds terrible, one sale out of 100 followers. But it's very easy to like something. It's very easy to reply to something. It's very easy to follow. Suddenly, it's so much harder to click buy or donate or call me. Um, so the CTR is often very low in the single digits. And if you've got 100 followers, if you go by this doctrine of 1% are your true followers, well, I need, I need more followers. What's 1% of 1,000 followers? 10? 10. 10 followers, 10 real followers. If I make 10 sales, is that viable? Maybe. Depending on what my product is, I could, I could live on 10 sales. I've got 1,000 followers, 10 sales, just to pick some numbers. So the more followers, the more better. Um, so I'm trying to get more followers because as you get more followers, the 1% becomes a bigger number. You know, I've got 12,078 followers. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And Perhaps you'll be a superstar and you'll have 25% um, results. Well, still, out of 100 followers, 25% is, is small out of 10,000. So you want to keep getting followers. Before we talk about the tips on how to get followers, let's confirm a few things right here. Um, complete your bio information, the biographical information about your account. In Twitter, on the top right corner, uh, you can click on your icon. If it doesn't have your icon, if it still has the, the little egg or the person icon, that's one of the things that still needs to be done. Um, a fully set up account on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube is one that it has been completely set up and properly branded. So if you click on your icon on the top right corner and select um, Profile, If someone were to visit my account here, this one that I'm working with as an example, they would see company graphics, some sort of element at the top here, some text, some location, the tweets, and all of that. So 
when you first create a Twitter account, it's very, very empty. Maybe it's just a blue background. There's nothing really to look at. So the first step on any of these accounts is to set up the relevant information to be found, to be followed, and such. You should see an Edit Profile button, where then you have the ability to change that photo, change this photo, change these, this bio info. So again, not all of us might have this just yet. That's OK, just taking the notes here. So a complete, a complete bio has your URL claimed, your name in an obvious spelling. I'll explain these in a moment. Uh, your about information, your um, location, your home page address, the first one here about your URL claimed. Uh, on many networks, when you first create an account, like Facebook's the obvious one to use, uh, I might have it something like this. When I first create a Facebook page, it's something like facebook.com slash pages slash maybe your name and gibberish. Uh, not a very good web address, not a very good URL to, uh, to be memorable, to put onto your business card and such. What's going to be better, of course, is something like facebook.com slash Victor Lawyer or Law Offices. Most of the networks give you the ability to change that URL, that web address, your unique address on the network. This account, for example, it's twitter.com slash vmcink. It's the name of the business. It's, the, um, it's there, it's short, it's memorable, it's, uh, it's, it's what I want. So you have the ability to edit that on Twitter. They've actually got it on a different screen, so I'll go there in a moment. Do one more thing here actually. Your logos. Okay, your name and an obvious spelling. So uh, many networks limit the length of what you can call your page. I've worked with a client that. Um, they had a long name to their business and it just didn't fit in the space that they would give you. So they had to shorten it to something that made sense within their limitations. Many networks have a length of 16 characters or so. So that includes the spaces, that includes the apostrophes, or whatever is in your name of your business. Here's the spot in, in here. I'm, I'm trying to add a longer name here. It looks like I can add a longer name, but when I save it, it'll tell me it's too long. So whatever is the name of your business can go right there. There's also a spot here for this biography. It looks like I can type a lot, but at a certain point, it's too long. So this main bio, biographical information, That's another thing to fill in. And what I'll say about that think in terms of complete sentences 
that have keywords. <laughs> so here's a bad example. I often use the fictional business Victor's Bakery in, in my classes here where I talk about a business. So let's say I've got a bakery, Victor's Bakery, and I want to sell cookies and cupcakes and birthday cakes and whatever. So I'm going to use social media to get customers. So in Twitter or Facebook, a bad example of putting in a biography is just putting um, Victor's Bakery in San Diego. That's not a very good example of putting in the in a biography. It's bad because it's it's short. You have a lot of space to put more. It's bad because it's not detailed enough. Good. Victor's Bakery founded in 1989, serving um, baked goods focused on on healthy organic ingredients. Whatever my demographic is, whatever the goal of my business, uh, I'm going to be more detailed. I'm going to write a longer description here about what are we? Who are we? What are we selling? What's our product? Who would be most interested? Because all of this is a, is a version of SEO. It's search engine optimization. People are going to search for the keywords San Diego Organic Bakery or Healthy Snacks for Kids in Chula Vista. So if I can kind of brainstorm and think, what are, the, what are the terms that people are going to search for? Do those terms apply to my business? And if they do, how can I set them to my account? Obviously, I'm not telling you to just steal every good idea keyword and put it into your profiles here. That's fraudulent. Uh, that will actually be detrimental to you if I just fill it up with keywords, healthy, organic, low cost, high quality, blah, 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 comma, comma, you know, just putting in keywords. That does not help. The search engines and the, and the networks are too smart for that, and that will actually be detrimental to you. You do want to write complete sentences, accurate sentences full of these keywords and concepts of what people will be searching for. These sentences are useful for you to be found. This example here, social media web design finance, keep up with the latest to be successful. So there's those keywords, success and finance. Keep up to date. Logos. <coughs> <coughs> On these networks, you usually get a large, wide graphic plus a small square graphic. Some networks call it your cover image, some of them call it the banner image. In Twitter here, I've got a space for a, li a large wide graphic. And then also the logo. It's a circle instead of a square. But I've got a spot here to, to put in a graphic here and a graphic there. You can use these spots for even more marketing. Let me show some examples over here. If I look at our college. So we've got the, the logo of the college here. We've got a graphic with students here and also text that says free classes and career training. That is a graphic that needs to be created in something like Photoshop or Paint or some kind of software. You cannot create this kind of graphic in Twitter or Facebook and such. You need to have the graphic prepared. And I'll give you a link in a moment to a great software. Now here's an example. Let's look at another educational institute. Um, I also teach at Southwestern College. So at Southwestern College, there's the logo, uh, an artistic graphic of the library or gym or whatever that is. And just some branding there about that school. 
and then their information here, established in 1961, etc. The one for our college here, adult education institution within San Diego. Just to stay on the on the idea of colleges. Okay, here's UCSD. So actually, oh, okay, they're not. Uh, notice here, I went to the Twitter account UCSD, which is, I thought, okay, UCSD. But actually, their official Twitter is not UCSD, it is UC San Diego. So I just point that out because people, when I said over here about your obvious name, people are going to perhaps think about searching for you in a certain way. I thought about searching for, uh, for UCSD on Twitter as simply UCSD. But they're not UCSD, they are UC San Diego. So I would give them a little demerit for that. So their real address is over here. OK, UC San Diego. We've got guys a library. Looks like it's falling over. Then we've got a cool picture up at the top with some hashtags in the, in the picture. We'll talk about what hashtags are, of course. So just some more branding. What is this organization? And what are they showing in all of that? So what should they have done? They seem to have both because it says we've moved. So it seems that they do control this, but they, they're on the other one. And for whatever reason, the chancellors or whoever decided that they want it spelled out more than just the, the short name. So what should they have done? I think they should have kept the old name, but the powers that be decided, let's switch over to the long name. Because I don't know, is it, is it UC Los Angeles? Curious. No, it's not UC Los Angeles. So where's the consistency there? Is it UCLA? It's UCLA. So I don't know what the consistency is. Someone there made some choice, and I don't think it's a good choice. And what they should have done is kept at the initials of the university. But for some reason, UC San Diego. What's that? It could have been a conflicting acronym. So other company had a the problem is that, for example, UCSD, there may be a conflicting acronym, but they seem to own the account. They're just not using it. As for UCLA, um, someone else owns it. I don't see anything that says who they are or what. So I don't know. I don't know what's really going to be confused between UCSD and UCSD. USD. Well, one is USD. SD, SB. I don't know. I, I think it's hard to accidentally type a B versus a D on the keyboard, but. Unless somebody tells you what to type in. And over here. Is there a, would there have been a way for them to connect these two accounts and just mirror their posts and mirror the account without having to physically manage both accounts? Not automatically. You can use software to manage two accounts and have them be mirrored in content, but it's not automatic that what you put into one will show up in another. And by the way, by how they are now, I guess it's working fine for them. They've got 27,000 followers, so the other account is, does, almost doesn't even matter, 737 followers. But just something interesting that popped up here. So for yourself, that's something to think about where I've noted it here. Name, your name in an obvious spelling. Is the name of your business initials? Is it spelled out? If, if it's, you know, Victor Campos International, well, that's not going to fit. You have a certain amount of space, so what? How can I write it? Victor Campos, I N T L. Do enough people know that that means international? Or Victor Campos, I N T, international. So, you have that uh, that issue to deal with sometimes about your name's already taken. Someone else has it before you. And really, when a, when a name is taken on any of these networks, usually you cannot take it from them, especially if they're also active with it. Uh, and this is one of the things that all of these networks really need to fix. There are accounts that are created that haven't been used in years, but I bet UCLA would love to own that name on Twitter, but they can't because someone created it, and these networks, they don't release these names out. Um, unless extraordinary circumstances. So for our notes here, URL claimed, your address claimed. A tip is try to claim your name on all the networks so no one else does. 
you may never, uh, you may never uh, use Snapchat. But one day when you decide, actually, I should have been on Snapchat, and then now the name is taken. Uh, maybe you're going to have a plan to get into YouTube eventually. Well, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. You get into YouTube, the name is taken. Well, you have to settle for another name. Maybe put a number two on it or something, and that's annoying. So even if you never use it, it's a good idea to go to these networks and claim your account just in case you ever do decide to use it. It doesn't expire, it doesn't shut down. We saw that one that hasn't been used since 2013, and five years later hasn't been shut down, so these networks need to fix that up and clean it up because uh, I've worked with um, people that wanted a name and the name was taken but the account is not active and you, you contact the network and they never get back to you, they, they just don't do it for some reason. Even though some of these networks are 10 years old, I, I don't know why they don't release these old names. They're unused, someone wants to use them legitimately, I don't know why they don't release them. So you can further get other... Um, you can get other inspiration. I was just showing that you can get inspiration from other accounts. You know, we have the city, I'm trying to find the city of San Diego, and um, here it is. Visit San Diego is the official account for San Diego. So I, I maybe I don't want to see what San Diego actually is if they couldn't get it. What is this? San Diego Gazer at gmail.com. Events, restaurants. Okay, so this is some independent organization that uh, claimed San Diego before the city of San Diego. So they had to go with Visit San Diego. Notice it's the official one because it's got the little blue verified account. When you don't have that little verified icon, you have to be a little bit weary. A little bit wary. Are they the official representative or not? They look legitimate, they've got the name San Diego, they've got the Twitter account San Diego, they've got a map of San Diego, they're legitimate. They've got a photo of San Diego, right? They're legitimate. No, if they don't have that little uh, blue check mark, they might not be legitimate. Uh, how would that apply to your business account? What, what do you mean by what's legitimate and not yeah. if I have a restaurant? That's For us, smaller accounts, it doesn't apply as much. This is more for like big name oh, okay. accounts that could get, you know, fraud. So it's not a requirement for a small business? No. Okay. I'll make a note of that here. I'll say if your small business doesn't have the verified check mark, it's not a big deal. That's usually for the ones that are big and they get, you know, fraudulent accounts and such. Um, you may get a verified mark or not but it's not detrimental to not have it okay solo logos can be a literal image about your products or an artistic photo about your company or a marketing uh, photo for your um, let's see a marketing photo for your brand we saw okay the UCSD one was a good one it had students graduating it had hashtags written on it we saw the one of Southwestern College. It had an artistic photo of the campus. We saw the one for continuing education. It had students, happy students, and then some text about classes and such. So, yes? Is it a good idea to keep those images uh, static, or should they be updated on a regular basis just to keep interest for any reason? That one is uh, very much up to you. You could keep this same photo always. It doesn't quite matter because what's going to catch people's attention about what's changing are the actual tweets, the actual posts. This is enough. This is enough for someone to catch, for us to catch someone's attention to click the follow button. That's all. That's going to serve the purpose, or they're not going to see it that often. 
it is fun perhaps and if you've got the time and nowadays we've got so much time nowadays right you could uh, change that up every few weeks or months or whatever to for interest sure I was gonna show here I'll put it in the notes pixlr.com pixlr.com this is a free online photo editing website it's like a it's like a distant relative to Photoshop how many of you have ever used Photoshop before a few people so if you know a little bit of Photoshop where you can put pictures together put text on a picture fix the colors put my head on my cat's face etc you know Photoshop you can do those things Pixlr is similar to that except it's like the junior version of it it doesn't have all of the features but it's free and you can access it online from any computer Photoshop you have to buy it download it install it Pixlr is completely free so I will say here in the notes use pixlr.com as a free photo editor <clears throat> so you can check that out on your own you've got um, pixlr editor you can get the pro one um, the web editor is online it's like Photoshop junior that may load up or not but that's okay you can check that on your own okay location in your social networks optional right because if I've got Victor's bakery on Main Street I want to put my address there so that people know where my business is at so they can go to my business and buy my products but if I'm a plumber and I go to people's locations to do my work if I go out if I'm mobile if, if I'm a mobile detail car detailer for example I'm not gonna put the location of my house or, or my home office maybe I'm a web designer and I work out of my home office but I'm not gonna put that so it's it's optional only add it if you'd like your location public and most of us well I, I don't know not most many of us probably don't I work from home I don't need my home address on Twitter so you can set that up it's optional it's not bad if you don't put it in but it could be very helpful if you do have it for people to find you then people can find your location on a map again Victor's Bakery Main Street come on over while well, my address is there they can click the button uh, they see my profile they click the button they go to my location home page address add your main web add your website's main page or a landing page I'll explain landing page in a moment but most of these networks have the ability for you to link elsewhere not necessarily back to your home page or to another look another address maybe I'm selling a lot of stuff on eBay I can put my eBay address in my Twitter account right here where it asks uh, right here where it asks for address website I could put my email at ad my eBay address that'll work I had it here that I had the main home page that will work I could have a landing page something like sales june.html a landing page is a little side note landing page 
any screen on your site not accessible except by a special link. Your about page or your contact page or your products page, all of those links are easily accessible on your website. They're in the menu. You go to your home page, you click the menu to buy, it goes to the product page. It should not be hidden. These other screens could be hidden in the sense that the only way you can get to those screens or pages is by a certain link. The link that I've got on my Twitter account, or my newsletter, or my business card, or the uh, radio ad that I put out. Uh, visit our website today to get 20% off your next birthday cake. victorsbakery.com slash 91x.html So I've created a page that is not accessible on my website unless people know the link to it. That, in short, is a landing page. So it's sort of like a hidden promotional page or link on your site. That can help you measure traffic on different platforms. Exactly. Platforms. Purpose, a way to help you measure efficacy, your effectiveness, effectiveness of social media. If on Twitter I use that landing page over and over, and I use a different landing page for Facebook, I can compare which of the two am I getting more traffic from. <clears throat> if I use the same link on multiple networks, I can also check, along with something like Google Analytics, I can check where is the traffic coming from to this page. I shared it on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, but I'm getting more traffic on Instagram. So that can, again, help me measure which uh, which network is is working better <coughs> alright so <clears throat> all of that was for some ideas about um, you need I had up here Tasks. Set up the account. Complete the bio. We'll do. We'll do this one. Then we'll take a break before we try to get followers, and we'll have a lecture on followers right after the break. But before we try to get followers, that's putting the cart before the horse. Before I try to get followers, I need to show and convince people why should they follow me. One is that the account is set up in the ways we just talked about. It's got a logo, it's got a graphic, it's got a biography, who are we? It's got that basic information to entice people, who are you, what's your business, why should I follow you? The next way that we will entice the followers is by creating one to three pieces of content. And I have it listed here very generically, pieces of content. Because in Twitter it's going to be one to three tweets. In YouTube, it's going to be one to three videos. In, in Pinterest, it's going to be one to three pins. Whatever the terminology of the network is, one to three pieces of content. So we'll do this for a bit, then we'll take our next break. So start off before trying to get followers in any network to have some content as a representation of what the follower will hope to see. I'm going to show people, if you follow me, you're going to see that I publish or put out coupons. You're going to see that I put out recipes. You're going to see tasty pictures. You're going to see deals. You're going to see inspirational quotes. What are people going to get out of following you? Because even the basic action of clicking a follow, um, those are, people don't do that right away. People might like your photo and that's it, move on with my life. What else is there? You want to capture people to have that captive audience. Well, what will they expect to see 
if they click follow. I'm already following 90 accounts. I, I don't have enough headspace to deal with another account. Oh, but I see you're constantly po posting a lot of great, funny cat pictures. OK, I can, do, I can use more cats. So I'll click follow, and then I'll get that content. So what I will say here is uh, share or post a picture representing your product brand, whatever. Share a, a video about your business. <laughs> Share a link back to your website with something useful. Not just the link about, hey everyone, Victor's Bakery is on Twitter. And then you click the, and then you add the link, victorsbakery.com. No, not something like that. Um, something a little better like this. So here's a bad tweet, here's a good tweet. Victor's Bakery is now on Twitter. And then we put our web address. Victor.com. Victor'sBakery.com. That's bad because it has nothing important for, for the users. Uh, I don't know who you are, I don't care. Uh, follow, like, I don't know. Here's a better one. Um, to celebrate Victor's Bakery's uh, entry to Twitter, here's a free cookie on us and a link to a landing page a link to a landing page on our website obviously I have created the page on the website first before I try tried to tweet it and so I've got a little bit of text enticing people here's what you get all you have to do is follow us you get a cookie and attach a photo of a tasty cookie. So now there's a little bit more of an incentive. Who are you? I don't know. Victor's Bakery. I, that cookie caught my attention. Looks tasty. Oh, I get a free cookie if I follow your link. Now again, just like putting the billboard all over the town doesn't mean you're going to get a thousand calls that day that, that I'm going to hire you. The more you play the numbers, the more possibility. The more I put my billboard on different places throughout the city, the more possibility I have to get called and get hired. Just because then I get a thousand views on my billboard means let's say I might get 10 calls. Does, are those 10 calls going to result in 10 uh, clients? No, it might result into two clients. Is two clients enough to justify paying for 10 billboards? Maybe, maybe not. I'm putting out this tweet and I see a thousand people saw it. Okay, great. How many followers did that result in? Seven. Okay, how many sales did that result in? One. Did it? Was it a good trade to do to get a, a thousand followers but only one sale? Maybe. I didn't spend on anything. I spent two minutes to do it. So the effort of it regarding what you create to what you get, that's going to vary for everyone depending on your product, your demographic, and all of the things we'll further talk about. But all of our social media, before we take our break here, all of this social media is in service of your business. How can it help you get to your ultimate conversion? And oftentimes, that's the sale. But in the meantime, I want to have a conversion of, I got a new follower. I got a reply. Someone visited the site. Those are getting me to the ultimate conversion. I made a sale. I sold a birthday cake. And that's what we'll cover from various angles as the course goes on in all of these networks. General questions? Let's take our second break. When we come back, we will do a little bit more of this tangibly. It's 11.35. We'll be back at 11.45. And then we'll continue.